votes after 16 days of political bickering. The shutdown is over, but the financial impact of it still remains. There is a great deal of uncertainty about the future, and that could impact your personal bottom line. News 8's Ken Pierce, live in Under Haven Newsroom, with concerns on Main Street and advice from an expert. Ken. And Keith, you said it. Uncertainty is the word we're talking about here. The government is back open for now, but this is only a temporary deal, and the worry is we might do all of this all over again after New Year's. The shutdown is over, so we can all stop worrying about the country's financial future, right? I'd say wrong. I'd say we're going to be back here again in a couple months. That's because all they did in Washington was put off the government funding problem until January and February. I'm just glad I have a job that doesn't deal with the government. <laughs> but that uncertainty about the government actually affects all of us. Financial advisor Vincent Esposito says interest rates are on the rise and Washington shenanigans are not helping. I think now's a really good time to dig in and really take a hard look at what's in your portfolio and how rising rates would affect those particular investments. Rising interest rates could mean that banks can raise the interest rate on your credit card. Also, if you're trying to buy a house, an increase of just a couple of percentage points on the interest rate for your mortgage could mean thousands of dollars more payments over the life of the loan. You know, I'm looking to buy a car, and that's going to be a concern there as well. And what's a concern for the whole world is this idea of America not paying its debts because Congress won't raise the debt ceiling. The market will dictate what the debt limit is for us, right? China, other countries that buy our debt, it's really not our politicians that dictate what the debt limit is. As for the markets here at home, they dipped during the beginning of the shutdown, but then headed back up. You'd feel like it might have been a good time to, to sell things in your 401k or to do something with your investments over the last few weeks when it really hasn't been a good time to do anything. So what should you do? Well, the financial advisor says, speak to a financial advisor. What should Congress do? Well, everyone we spoke to says it should get its act together and not take us through shutdowns and debt ceilings another three months from now. Keith? Ken Pierce, thank you. As the shutdown ends, the demand for change on Capitol Hill becoming louder and louder. President Barack Obama spoke today about the damage done in the wake of the shutdown. He says the focus of lawmakers should be on regaining the trust of the American people and rethinking about the way things are done in Washington. All my friends in Congress understand that how business is done in this town has to change. Because we've all got a lot of work to do on behalf of the American people, and that includes the hard work of regaining their trust. But let's be clear, uh, there are no winners here. These last few weeks have inflicted completely unnecessary damage on our economy. We don't know yet the full scope of the damage, but every analyst out there believes it slowed our growth. Now, according to Standard & Poor's, the two-week-long shutdown took at least $24 billion out of the U.S. economy.